150,000 tech workers have been laid off in 2022 alone. There are massive layoffs at Google, Meta, Microsoft, and other big tech companies. Now, recent reports show that 40,000 tech sector layoffs in USA have happened in January of 2023 alone. So are we all the software engineers or aspiring programmers? Is it still a good idea if you're in defense? Now I'm somebody that has seven years of engineering experience and I don't expect anyone to have tears for us. Now working as a software engineer, while there are definitely issues, has been nice. We have enjoyed good salaries, partially or fully remote roles, good perks, and so on. Now compared to the prestigious jobs of the 20th century, where basically most smart people that wanted to make a lot of money went into banking and management consulting, compared to those jobs, tech jobs like engineering, product manager, or designer roles have been really freaking awesome, at least up until now, right? So let's define how big the problem is with the tech layoffs. Now I browse many articles on CNN, New York Times, and Fox. Also there are websites like layoffs.xyz that document specific company layoffs. There are also places like BlindApp where tech employees have talked about being laid off and how they're basically trying to deal with the visa situation where they have 30 days before they're basically they're kicked out of USA. And that those kinds of situations, they really suck. And I also asked a few recruiters on LinkedIn and said that yes, generally speaking, engineers are more humble and that they're applying to more jobs and they're being more responsive than ever before. So there's a lot of truth to the tech layoff situation. Now, one caveat I would add is when you see Google or Amazon lane of 10,000 tech employees each, like they did recently, it's a mix of different kinds of roles from HR to design to product to marketing and software engineering. So while the competition has definitely increased, it's not like when those layoffs happened, you have 10,000 of the brightest engineers you're competing with against now. It's a fraction of the 10,000, maybe 30% as a guess. And the talent pool is a mix of good employees, bad ones, and everything in the middle. So is there a reason to despair? Well, I don't think so, and I'll show you a few reasons why. Now, there's still a ton of opportunities out there. Now, when doing a search on Indeed.com, there are 129,000 software engineer related jobs. So that's still a really good sign. Now, also maybe next time some of us, uh, when basically when we're in a job search, you may need to humble our expectations. Maybe some of us will have to take 10 to 20% less than we basically did two years ago. Uh, maybe instead of being fully remote, if you really wanted that job you applied for, maybe you have to be partially remote uh, or you just not get the job at all. But guess what? It's still a lot better than doing mindless work that other knowledge workers have done in different industries. For example, when I worked at a bank in my early 20s, I did boring Excel spreadsheets, PowerPoint presentations, and that was basically it. Now, I would 100% to work as a software engineer compared to my prior work. And sometimes I program for projects that aren't making any difference in the world, but I still feel like I have more say, generally speaking, in the industry. Now, if you're a top engineer, you're still in high demand. Now, I'm not gonna say I'm a top engineer. I didn't graduate from Stanford. I don't have Facebook or Google on my resume, but because I do have really good seven years of job experience, I regularly get offers for 170 to 200 K base for elite engineer positions that are fully remote and sometimes even more. Now it's not the flashy 250K base and 200K in stock equity like some of the fan job offer advertisements basically in the past, but it's still really good money compared to the rest of the world. We are so lucky for that. And you may have seen videos of people doing a boot camp and getting a job at Google or Uber within six months of learning how to program. Now you can still be a self-taught or bootcamp engineer, but those people on YouTube that are selling you a course are generally outliers and they're basically a little bit incentivized to sell you somewhat unrealistic expectations more likely your first job as a self-taught engineer or a bootcamp engineer, you're gonna have to hustle a lot for six months at least, and one year plus more likely, but that's basically what I did. And your first job, you may have to take a less attractive role that's not paying a ton of money, and that's totally cool. After two, three years of experience and hard work, you'll get a lot more opportunities. I remember my first two years, it was a grind, and things got a lot better from there. Now, another thing I can suggest is to build multiple valuable skills and differentiate yourself. Now, I didn't invent this principle. You can read Cal Newport's best-selling book, So Good They Can't Ignore You. Now, I'll give you an example. Now, learning programming is great and really valuable. So let's say you learned front-end JavaScript and you get a few odd gigs when you start out your first year. Well, there are a lot of engineers that have one skill, whether it's front-end with JavaScript or Python or Node.js or some other proper language. But when you combine two to three skills, you start to stand out a lot. So for example, I do front-end, back-end, and Solidity smart contract engineering. And it took me several years to be good at all of those. So when a client wants to find somebody that can build a smart contract and a website that interacts with it, well, instead of looking for two to three engineers, they can just hire me. And therefore I still get gigs in a recession. Now I also started to do decent quality YouTube videos and they're nothing special compared to some amazing channels out there, right? But 
Now I'd get offers to do developer relations projects where I do explainer videos or give talks and so on. There are a lot of companies that cannot find qualified candidates for developer relations engineer roles as an example. So many of them are looking for somebody that has two to three years of programming experience, but can also do explainer videos and do documentation and give talks on stage. So it's a great opportunity for people out there. Now, for you, it could be something completely different. It could be you're a machine learning engineer and a TikToker or a front end expert and somebody that's great eyed for design and animations. The last thing I want to mention is that building a network, if you have decent skills, exponentially helps in getting opportunities. So once you have friends in tech industry, they'll refer you to jobs. But what if you don't have that? Well, you can post what you learned on a blog on YouTube or on Twitter. For example, I spent a few days struggling figuring out how to do dynamic NFTs. And then I posted a summary of that in a 15 minute video on YouTube. And I got a couple hundred views on some of those videos and people are thanking me for that. Now, there are also plenty of communities online and in real life as well. So basically there's developer DAO for Web3 programmers as an example to start. Now you could also go and meet up the comment, find local events. Now, wherever you are in the world, Basically, there's plenty of ways to find people. There are too many communities and events to list here. The last thing I want to personally reflect on is that programming is still really cool. You can go into artificial intelligence with ChatGTP or work for Tesla AI on driving and build something that people use, basically use every day. And that's something really cool. And if you're more degen, you can do Web3 programming on Ethereum like I'm doing. Now, despite this crash, I still have really cool projects come along my way and I meet awesome people all the time. So are we f***ed as engineers? I don't think so as a collective group at least. It's definitely harder to find high quality paying jobs where you basically have an amazing work-life balance, but it's still really good. And while I still get frustrated with programming bugs or some office politics thing, generally, and especially compared to alternatives, I'm really grateful for the opportunity. Now, what has your experience been like with the tech layoffs? Maybe it didn't cover something or you have a different perspective. Feel free to post a comment, like, or share. Now, each week I'll be focusing on making better emerging tech videos where I try to be honest and have fun. So thank you for watching. Have a good day. See ya.